to a chart that we've done looking at some of the uh, China activity indices. So we have retail sales in white, industrial production in blue, and fixed asset investment in yellow. And you can see them kind of converging, whereas before uh, there was quite a big gap. I will push it out also on social media. But how much do you worry about the, the strength of the economy and actually the policies that have to be put in place to stabilize it? I, I think there's uh, too much doom and gloom. Uh, last week we turned uh, positive on the on the Chinese equity market. We, we think that the any any impact from the trade trade wars is going to be m minimal. Uh, the China would win, in fact, the trade war versus the U.S. on the back of a number of factors, including the fact that there is no term limit in terms of uh, President Xi. Um, they control the messaging uh, in order to contain sort of contain social unrest potentially should there be an economic downfall. And they also have the nuclear option of potentially um, looking to sell treasuries, which they would not. Uh, we, we would lead the U.S. into a recession, but also the region as well. So our view is that um, the economy will continue to, to grow, albeit at a slightly lower, lower pace. And um, we're positive with where valuations are right now. Yeah, I, I don't see the trade war lasting for long. And I hope that Trump is a deal maker it's going to make America great and figure out a deal. I do feel like um, both of them uh, don't want to go through this trade war. So it's just all basically political rhetoric. Um, but he does bring up a good point that if the trade war does continue, it's more likely that Trump would be ousted. But once again, you know, you're going to have to <laughs> wait for two years. And uh, it'd be really, really interesting to see if it goes down that rabbit hole. But I just don't see it happening. I see that. Um, Trump's just a really smart guy. Uh, he'll probably just make a couple of tweaks, just like he did with the NAFTA, and say it's the best deal in the world, where in reality it's pretty much the same thing as Obama. But, I mean, he's good at doing this, and he's great at getting support. And, uh, like I said, if it does make the deal better for the U.S., great. If he just basically tricks everyone, which he's really good at doing, um, at least he tried. I do feel like Obama did nothing, so uh, at least... Trump is swinging for the fences and trying to negotiate a better deal. But I mean, if you have gone through the NAFTA deal, he really didn't do much. And uh, it, he's definitely not helping workers. He's just helping, you know, people that, you know, help Trump get rich. Um, but at the end of the day, I still believe in him. I still think he could possibly get a deal. And at least he's doing this and not being a pushover like Obama. So I'll give him credit like uh, on that. But let me know what you guys think about this. Uh, and it's just a realization that, you know, the U.S. can't be number one forever and that other people are coming uh, to the table. And I think this is actually better. I think the way that U.S. Uh, basically bullies the entire world and we have these 17, 19 year wars, um, it, it needs to come to an end. And I think with four or five global superpowers, it's better. And hopefully this endless war that we, the American taxpayers, have to pay with will eventually stop. Um, but as long as you can give infinite money to politicians, uh, I think that, you know, pharmaceuticals and the military and industrial complex are the two largest uh, lobbying groups. So we'll have the most expensive meds in the world and the most expensive wars until we fix that uh, campaign finance issue. But let me know what you guys think about this and I will talk to you soon.